They pulled him out and started chest compression. She does not want us to identify her, only to say that she is one of Andrew Brown Jr.'s relatives and lives on the same block. She says she saw the shooting unfold and has a very different account of what happened compared to what prosecutors are saying about the shooting. It's not what I saw. It's not what I believe. She took these pictures after the shooting, showing the sheriff's truck parked in Brown's driveway. The same truck that appears to be on this surveillance footage obtained by CNN as it sped by moments before the shooting. She says she watched in disbelief from her window after seeing sheriff's deputies in front of Brown's home. Once they jumped out the back of the truck, he started backing up and they started shooting the front windshield of his car. And then he took off to go across the yard and they started shooting the back window of his car. All right. During a court proceeding Wednesday, the Pasquotank County District Attorney says law enforcement opened fire only after Brown's car came in contact with them. The next movement of the car is forward. It is in the direction of law enforcement and makes contact with law enforcement. It is then and only then that you hear shots. But she disputes the DA's claim. Did you see his car come in contact? No, no, I did not. He started backing up. No, let me stop you there. When he was backing up, did you, could you see if he was backing up toward any officers? No, he was not. There were none behind him. She also took photos of Brown's car after the shooting. This one appears to show at least one bullet hole in the front windshield. She took us to Brown's driveway where candles are now arranged spelling his nickname, Drew. She still remembers the last time she heard from Brown, a text she says she received from him last Wednesday at 8.20 a.m., about three minutes before the shooting. It reads simply, oh, Brown's way of saying hello. Extremely heartbreaking to have to watch and go through knowing he's one person she can't bring him back. So, Jason, amazing, and you had the chance to, you know, sort of talk about it with her, and, and I know, obviously, she didn't, didn't want to show her face. I know that as this is happening, there's been a change in the status of some of the officers involved in the case. You're, you're there. What can you tell me? Yeah, that's true. According to the county sheriff, uh, four of the officers that responded that day, uh, according to what the sheriff is saying, those four officers did not actually fire their weapons. So those four officers that were on administrative leave are actually now back on active duty. The three officers who did fire their weapons, those three officers still remain out on administrative leave.